explanation. But all right, so if we need to evaluate this, we see that this is a sum of two angles, right? And it's the cosine. So if I just apply my identity formula, my identity, which I have, I can go and say that the cosine of you know, this u plus v, you don't need to always label your angles, but I think it's sometimes helpful, especially when you're getting started. So you label u and v, and then basically we're just going to plug them into this formula, or basically the identity. So we can say cosine of 4 pi over 3 times the cosine of pi over 4, right? Cosine of u times cosine of v. And then now, remember, it's the cosine formula. So if it's plus angles, then you're going to subtract the values. And now we have the sine of 4 pi over 3 times the sine of pi over 4. And these are equivalent expressions. These are, are equivalent expressions. Yeah, they're, these are our identities based on that. Does anybody have any questions on what I did here? That's at least the setup. And basically, guys, once you get some practice, I mean, the setup is rather simple. Yes? You don't have to memorize this? Nope. No. Like nope. Yeah, what? Say that again? Like, where does that No, I'm not. Yeah, you could group them. And yeah, that's sometimes helpful, especially when you're dealing with subtraction. I really, really like to put brackets around here because sometimes that can be confusing. Um, I will say, though, and what you'll see, though, is um, you know, in the front one, this one's positive. It's not really a big of a deal. But let's go and evaluate this. Now, again. You're knowing your unit circle, guys. Like, look how many times we're evaluating the unit circle. Four times, right? So if you're spending your time drawing the unit circle and taking forever to do it, it's going to take you a really, really long time to do these problems. So before you eat your strawberry, cosine of 4 pi over 3, let's think about that. That's going to be? Oh, it wasn't a strawberry? Oh, I thought it was. All right. So cosine of 4 pi over 3, if we think about that, cosine of 4 pi over 3 is in the third quadrant. That means cosine is going to be negative. Pi over 3 is, is uh, cosine is 1 half, so therefore this is negative 1 half. Can I get a second? Yes? Yeah. So I can somebody seconds that? Oh, yeah. Cosine of pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2. Minus sine of 4 pi over 3 then, that's in the third quadrant. That means sine is negative, so that's going to be negative square root of 3 over 2. And then sine of pi over 4 is going to be square root of 2 over 2. Okay. Again, you don't really need to use the brackets, but if it helps you, please do that. Because one thing I notice is, so now we can simply multiply. Now there's a very important thing, guys. When you have terms in front or under the radical, as long as they have the same index, you can multiply these. So 3 to 2, you can multiply those. Um, you can't multiply a number, though, outside of a radical that's not under the same index inside of a radical. But if I go ahead and multiply this straight across, I get negative square root of 2 over 4. And then this is basically minus a negative, right? So that could, we could really rewrite that as a positive. Positive square root of 6 over 4. OK, now, that is technically correct. I can tell you, though, you're probably not going to see that as an answer choice on a multiple choice test. They would probably ask you to at least combine them to one denominator. So you'd probably see it rewritten like this. Um, or that is the way that I would at least, um, on my, you know, if I was going to give you answer choices, that's the way I would like to see it. You could, they could also do factor out a square root of 2 and have a 4, just so you know. This could also be another representation. So another way is think about if you, like, what do these have in common? They both have a square root, they both have a 4 in common, right? So you can factor out a 4 in the denominator. Mm -hmm. And they both have a square root of 2 because does the square root of 2 oh, okay. put that away. Put it away. No, put it away. Doesn't the, the, doesn't square root of 2 both divide into square root of 2 here and square root of 6? Mm -hmm. Yes, right? So you could divide that out. Again, I'm just telling you this. Like I'm not gonna have that on my test, but it might show up on the EOC or it might show up on an ACTS, I don't know, like some other kind of test you might see. Anything that you would have that, you might see that. <laughs>